Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus, friends. Today is a very, very special feast, the Feast of the Divine Mercy. And today we are looking at what is the real value of this all popular devotion. Saint Pope John Paul II, who is also now known as the Divine Mercy Pope and the Divine Mercy Saint, he says, apart from the mercy of God, apart from divine mercy, there is no source of hope for humankind. Humankind, yes, it refers to all peoples, to all nations, and it refers to you and to me. And here the Saint Pope is telling us, for you and me to be saved from whatever the crisis that threatens us may be. For you and I to experience the salvation of our souls, the salvation of our family, whatever that salvation that we need so desperately. He says the only hope we have is in the mercy of God. Now, when we look at this big statement, we need to consider, is it poetry? Because we know that St. John Paul II was very much a poet. Is it an exaggeration because he was Polish? Or is it real? And if it is real, this has a real impact on our lives. We need to know how we can access it, how we can experience that salvation through divine mercy. Friends, let us first look at what is this divine mercy devotion about? It is expressed through seven ways. Firstly, the veneration of the image of the divine mercy with its signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Now friends, let us note it is the veneration of the image and not the worship of the image. Veneration is, I honor it because of a certain value I have for the person whom it points out to, the person who perhaps has given it to me. So I am honoring this image very specifically because there is a message below, a signature as it is known, Jesus, I trust in you. Secondly, it is the commemoration of the Feast of the Divine Mercy Sunday, which is for us always the Sunday after Easter Sunday. Thirdly, it is the praying of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Fourthly, it's the praying of the Divine Mercy Novena. Fifthly, it is the observance of the Hour of Divine Mercy, which is an option of 3 p.m. wherever you are in the world or even of 3 a.m. And the next is the Divine Mercy calls us to exercise mercy in words, in deeds and in prayer, in praying for others. Now friends, here is where we see this devotion is taking a turn and it is so different from all the other devotions because it requires from us to live mercy in words, in our actions and in praying for others. And lastly, the Divine Mercy devotion requires us to work for the spreading of works of mercy. So it's about bringing the kingdom of heaven on earth by working actively, every one of us, wherever we are placed, in our communities, in our families, in our parishes, on the media ground, wherever we are, to work to spread and promote the works of mercy. Now, when we look at divine mercy, we realize that this has become very popular only in the last few decades. Now, very many of us grew up with the Sacred Heart having a very central place. And therefore, we could wonder, is this just a fad, you know? Pope John Paul II took it up and so 
is it like just for a little while till some other great devotion takes that centrality and here is where we need to go to the origins of the specific divine mercy devotion that we have before us and we realize in the years immediately before the second world war from 1934 to 1938 sister Faustina Kowalska she recorded revelations that she received from Jesus through apparitions and this is not a vision but Jesus appeared to her in person and he gave her these revelations which she recorded. Here is where there's something interesting, very interesting in the history of the Divine Mercy devotion and that is exactly 25 years after the first revelations which was in 1934, 25 years later in 1959 the Polish bishops themselves banned the devotion. Well, the reasons are very interesting in that when they looked at the Divine Mercy image and they looked at those streams of mercy, a red stream of light and the white stream of light, they immediately equated it with the Polish flag, which is red and white. Now, it's very um, confusing why they came to such a conclusion. But thankfully, 19 years later, through the persistent efforts of the Divine Mercy Pope, Pope John Paul II, the whole case was investigated and the devotion was placed back at the center of the church. Friends, here is where there's something else that we need to know about the history of this image. When Jesus appeared to Sister Faustina Kowalska, he very specifically wanted that image to be painted. And therefore, under her direction, a Lithuanian artist painted the Divine Mercy image. When Sister Faustina, Saint Faustina, looked at this image, it is said that she wept. She was so grieved because the painting did not capture the beauty of the vision. And subsequently, the Lord consoled Saint Faustina, telling her specifically that it is not about the color of the paint that the brush has applied on the painting, but it was all about His grace. We see through the messages that clearly the Lord is centering our attention through the Divine Mercy devotion back to the climax at Calvary where after all the evil has been perpetrated, after death has been the verdict, after all that the sin of humankind has done, it is mercy that triumphs. The heart of God pours out mercy, salvation and grace. And here is where the great saint Pope John Paul II, he says mercy is so necessary because it is greater than sin, greater than all the evil the world can encounter. It is greater than death. So the first important fact that you and I need to know about the divine mercy is that it is centered on the salvific act at Calvary of mercy pouring out of the heart of God. Salvation accomplished by the mercy of God. And friends, here we need to understand that God's nature is mercy, but for Him to dispense mercy and save humankind cost Him everything. It was through the sorrowful passion and death of Jesus that mercy was dispensed to humankind. And this is the first thing that you and I need to contemplate on. This is the central aspect of divine mercy. Now to completely understand the wealth of the divine mercy, we need to go back right to the first pages of the Bible, where in Genesis chapter 2, God has placed humankind in paradise and God specifically directs Adam, humanity, not to partake of, not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge 
of good and evil. So there is a tree in paradise, it's known as a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord clearly commands humankind that they can eat anything except that one fruit. And then when we go to the next chapter, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, we see the encounter or should we say the deception of humankind by Satan. And here Satan promptly directs the gaze of Eve, of humanity again, directs the gaze of Eve to that forbidden fruit and tells her, if you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be opened. You will understand what is good and what is evil and very specifically, you will be like God. So Satan kind of presents this proposition that you will supplant God, you will be God because you will know how to judge. And in the next verse, verse 6, Eve found it desirable that she could have such wisdom and such status. And what we realize with this, paradise is lost. Friends, with this, the tendency was embedded in every human heart to judge, to hate. And what we see immediately there at paradise is Adam and Eve, after consuming this fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they have shame and guilt. They judge themselves, they hate themselves. And we see in the next chapter, brother judges and hates brother. And today, when we look at humanity, we realize, yes, we judge those within our family. We judge every person we meet. We judge the person by the actions. We judge the person by the looks. We even judge people whom we do not know. We are very busy passing judgments on everyone. And here is where we realize the very act of judgment pushes us out of paradise. And here is where we see God responding to our sin, our sin of judgment by inviting us to mercy. Friends, when we look at divine mercy, there are three themes. And the first theme is to seek mercy. There is no experience or no celebration of divine mercy unless you and I launch out by seeking mercy for ourselves. And this means firstly, refusing, desisting from judging others. Friends, to judge another person, we must understand is to take the place of God. In Genesis chapter 50 verse 19, Joseph of the Old Testament specifies, he says to his brothers who are seeking his mercy, he says, can I take the place of God? Because it is God alone who has the power to sit on the judgment seat. Jesus specifies it is only the one who is without sin who can cast the first stone. And to imagine I am sinless, to imagine I am perfect is an imagination that I am God. Scripture clearly tells us that vengeance, revenge, which comes from judgment belongs to God. Jesus himself came to this world, God though he was. He clearly says, I have come not to judge but to save. And he warns us. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 we read, He warns us, if you judge, you will be denied mercy. You will be judged. And today we must understand, if we have judged, basically we have supplanted God and God can do nothing for us. God cannot give us the mercy we so need to experience salvation. Now, in seeking mercy, we see the prerequisite is to repent from judging others and secondly, to turn seeking pardon from God for our own sinfulness. It is to tell God, God, I have sinned, I do not want sin in my life. I do not want the curse of sin and I do not want the pleasure of sin. And friends, if I do not want the curse of sin, which is destruction, destruction of relationships, destruction of my life, eternal destruction, I also cannot partake of the pleasures of sin.
And this also means I cannot take pride in the sins of the past and what I have gained through the sins of the past. So it's a complete rejection of sin. And this is what seeking mercy is. And the Lord God has clearly said to Saint Faustina, he says, anyone who seeks my mercy, who believes in mercy will obtain it. And here is where we come to the second theme of divine mercy. And that is to trust in the mercy of God. Friends, when we look at our innate tendency to judge others, we must understand the only way we can be delivered from that tendency to judge is by looking to the divine mercy and which is why we have the importance of the veneration of the image of the divine mercy. Friends, meditating on what Christ has done for us, meditating on Jesus whose heart has been cut open and from which flows mercy, living mercy, we, our eyes shall be healed of its sickness, its tendency to judge. Friends, when we judge certain people, when we take an instant dislike to certain people, it's precisely because there is a venom of bitterness and hatred within us. It has nothing to do with the persons we look at. And when we look at the divine mercy, when we look at the heart of God, that venom within us is drained away. And we see the prophecy of the divine mercy, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, where the word of God says, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And I will pour out a spirit of mercy. He will deliver us from the spirit of judgment. He will give us a spirit of mercy and supplication when we look upon him whom we have pierced. And because of that spirit of mercy, our hearts will come alive. It will not be cold, stony hearts, but hearts that are moved by the suffering that we have caused. And friends, it is when we contemplate the mercy of God, when we trust in Jesus, which is why it is said, the signature of the divine mercy image is Jesus, I trust in you. When we contemplate this, we are converted to being saints. Friends, we've heard how it is said, every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. And that difference, that difference that can lead us from a past of sin to a future of being a saint is the contemplation of the divine mercy of God. And the third theme of the divine mercy is to be channels and witnesses of mercy, to communicate mercy. And this means living out mercy through works of mercy. We know there are corporal acts of mercy and spiritual acts of mercy. Living out mercy in our families. Charity begins at home by being patient, by being kind, by being forgiving to those whom we live with, by being merciful on social media, by being merciful to people we meet, by allowing ourselves to love others without judging them for their acts or their beliefs or their failures. Friends, it is when we live by such mercy, would we have really experienced the power of God's mercy. Yes, friends, to celebrate the divine mercy is about accomplishing God's plan for humankind. Because by our conversion to the mercy of God, by our communication of the mercy of God, we shall draw humankind to the foot of the cross. We shall draw humankind to gaze upon the heart of God. We shall draw humankind to come alive to the mercy of God and this earth will become a paradise again. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Jesus.
the living God. You are with us present in the Holy Eucharist. We worship you. We adore you. It is you, O oh God. It is you really present here in this sacred host. We see your face. We feel your presence. Your strength is prevalent everywhere. Thank you, O oh God, for your mercy being revealed to us today. We trust in your mercy and power. We offer to you, O oh God, the whole world, this broken world, the wounded humanity. We bring before you, O oh God, and we worship you. We adore you. You are the Son of God. You come to make sure that none of us should perish. O oh God, for your infinite mercy and compassion, we praise you. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, on this day, the feast day of divine mercy, we are gathered together in our own homes to worship the Lord our God. God is truly present to us in the Holy Eucharist. From the altar, the Lord is telling every one of us, this is my body to be broken for you. What Jesus said during the Last Supper to the Apostles, this is my body to be broken for you. Breaking his own body. Offering his own body to be broken. Our Lord has revealed his infinite mercy for the broken humanity. And today, the Lord is waiting to reveal that great mercy to every one of us. Mercy for God. A God who weeps, a God who cares, a God who comes down powerfully for the hungry, for the sick, for the outcast, for the marginalized. A God today shedding tears. As Martha and Mary saw him in Bethany, 
in their house shedding tears sobbing the lord is present in every sick family every distressed family by the side of everyone in isolation the lord is present in tears sobbing and that mercy that mercy flowed out powerfully raising up the dead man and that's what we are praying that everyone know this mercy and turn to him they will not perish they will be healed they will be comforted by the mercy of our god meditating on this great mercy revealed in jesus christ you find me all my fears and failures and fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender and say sisters and brothers as we meditate on this infinite mercy of our god as pope francis our dear pope holy father tells us our confidence our confidence in god will be awakened in us the only confidence we have today in these hard times the pope continued is in the mercy of our god and as we experience that mercy and confidence we will never slip into despair and fear we will hold on to our god whose hands are reached out to save us at the same time we will be able to become agents of god's mercy taking our phone to call up someone who is in distress someone going to hospital someone in the neighborhood who is shaken up by fear and there are thousands who are starving today we must be able to go out and help them financially as we are able to we need to share as the early christian community did and express our mercy to everyone sick and suffering let us now receive the blessing of the lord let this blessing reach everyone everyone that they may experience god's loving merciful presence by their side let's worship him and receive the blessing
The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 04022310. Zero 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 one four, HDFC Bank, Chalakudi Branch, IFSC Code, HDFC zero 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 four zero two, and email the details to Divine Retreat Center at gmail.com.